Ramble. Lisa Nakaib. Lisa Nakaib. Lisa Nakaib. Don't yell at me. Lisa Nakaib. Lisa, Lisa. Welcome to Guilty <laughs> Pleasures. That was a lot. That Lisa a lot. Le- As it is written. Hey, we're talking about Dune 2. As it was written. As it was written. As it's written. And I'm just here. We're talking about <laughs> Muadib. Muadib. We're, ta- we're talking about the Muadib. Muadib. We're talking about Asul. Usul. We're Usul. talking about Paul. We're Paul talking Atreides. about Paul Atreides. Usul. The Muadib. The Paul the Messiah, Usul, the Traitis, the Traitis. I, I believe Dude, this is the whole thing. Two guys, uh, we Woo! weren't we weren't gonna do this episode, but this this movie is just living in our head rent free. It rocked Woo! our fucking world. It's beautiful. Fucking god damn, buddy. <laughs> I've okay, so I've been a Denis Villeneuve uh, fan for a while uh, since uh, Enemy. Weirdly, um, I, I saw Prisoners. Um, and I was like, oh man, this guy is fantastic. I love this type of, this style of, you know, I'm going to zoom into the bark of a tree to set the atmosphere uh, type of directing. Um, so I watched Prisoners, loved that, watched Enemy, loved that, and then jumped to Sicario. And I was oh. like, oh, this is the greatest I forgot director that's this, that's this guy. that ever fucking lived. Yeah, was, he's yeah. got the juice. He's got that the fucking movie juice. Fucked. That movie fucks. That movie fucks so hard that I like. I was high while watching it, and then I, like, I don't. I don't know what it is. I willed the high to go away because <laughs> I needed to pay attention. I was like, wait, wait a second. It was almost like that meme. I don't know if you've seen it or if, if, and, if people who if people who have seen it will know what I'm talking about. But a meme. Of a guy playing a game and he's like leaning back and then feeling like he has to lock in and then immediately leans, leans forward. forward. The amount of times yeah. I, I saw this movie with Garrick, the amount of times that we both just shifted yeah. forward in our yeah. chair. Oh yeah, to it was. And this was in. this was Zach's second time seeing the movie. Was I busy? Where was what was? <laughs> he he, uh, he had one extra ticket. I had one extra ticket. You invited Zach over me. You didn't want to watch this fucking movie. I saw it. Yeah, you already saw it. Bitch, now I know where I stand. Good to know. Wow. Good to know. Yeah, wow. 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 How do you think I feel? Oh, my God. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to see a movie with either of you. I'm sorry. I'm going I'm, to see the American Magical Negroes this weekend by myself. Yeah, you're you're damn right you're going to see it by yourself. <laughs> I to refuse bad. to watch that movie. No, this is supposed to be bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. wow. Damn. <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be funny. Oh my god! I thought it was like a little it, comedy no, indie movie film. No, no, oh, no. Shit. I don't know uh, anything about it. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, yeah, it's so funny. Whatever. You guys are better friends. It's cool. So it's it's uh, Dune to Denny is cooking. Uh, we're gonna talk about all about Lisa Al Gaib. We'll tell you about the Benny Jesuit. We're gonna help you unwind and unpack all of these fun phrases. Obviously, this is gonna be a spoiler filled combo. Yeah. Um, yes. I'm going to tell you what we loved, all the things in between. I want to start here and tell you. Uh, so we did a, an episode on Dune 1 yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah. And it's f- years. Yeah. Yeah. It was like two years, two years ago. ago. How long have we been doing this? Bro? <laughs> I, you, d- dude, you, t- you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Carry on. Yeah. I love <laughs> and it. it's it's quaint going back to listen because we we dove into Dune 1, which really is part one of this two-part story, like, and Dune One is setting the stage for Denny to then come in and cook in this one. Oh my god! But I, I went and saw the movie with Maggie. She didn't watch part one, but I'm like, you know what? You love being part of the zeitgeist. I know you're gonna be sad if if and feel left out. I'm just gonna give you a recap. So I showed her a recap on YouTube. Shout out to YouTube. You have great recaps. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm pausing every couple of minutes, like a six minute recap, and I'll be like, okay, Benny Jesuit, okay, pause. They're the space witches. Great, unpause. And then I'm, I'm going through, and I'm like, look, basically, all you need to know is that it's an allegory for the Middle East. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's a hero's journey. And this guy, Paul, comes in, and he's a good, he's gonna save them. <laughs> and about 10 minutes into the movie, I lean over and I go, I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I cuz holy shit, now that it the reason I saw it twice is because I finally now understand what the fuck Dune is. What and, is and, it? And and we'll get it. <laughs> and, 
and it took me sick is what it is. six, you know, six hours of wrapping my head around this world to go, oh, that's the story that we were telling. And here I thought that this was just your regular old hero's journey, white savior, man comes in, saves the world. No, oh this is the rise of a dictator. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Wait, I, can I just watch this podcast? Do I have to participate? Because I want to hear that. Yeah. Tell me what I'm missing. Oh, all right. You, you saw Dune 2, right? Yes. And yeah. one. But yeah. I don't know what. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. I have my own theory about him using Zendaya, but. Yeah. That's not a theory. It's real. <laughs> That's right? Yes. He's using Zendaya. Yes. He's a bad man. He's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. He said, I will love you till my last breath. Yeah. And that was a lie. Uh, that was a lie because he was just like, I'm going to marry this other lady for political power. <sighs> this is this in, is in the, the rise of ready. Darth Vader times 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a moment. He's the villain? Yeah. You're watching the rise <laughs> of the villain. Did you watch the movie? Yeah. This yeah. is, this is you know, the Phantom Menace, you know, where it's just like you're watching the, the it's like, oh, oh well, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's just like, oh, well, look at this adorable child. Why is his shadow in the shape of Darth Vader? Because you're watching Darth Vader grow up. I thought the bad guys were the white fucking bald. Everyone's bad. Everybody's um, bad. Everybody's bad. Everybody's bad. It blew my mind when that clicked in. Uh, there is a, I mean, we'll, 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 we'll rewind the clock. We'll get into it. But there is a, a moment towards the end of the film where uh, Timmy Chalamet has his villain turn. We'll talk about it. And from that moment forward, it, this movie just locks in in a way yeah. that I, I could not believe. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm so tempted to go to the end, but... What the fuck, man, this movie. Yeah, this movie rips, man. I It's really hard to sit here and talk about every plot point like you can really, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't want to say that it's not understandable, but it's like pretend well, like you aren't, pretend like you aren't in awe the entire time you're watching. I, the, the entire time I was watching it, I was just like, I don't want to analyze this at all. Mm -hmm. I kind of just want to experience it. I kind of just want to feel with the audience there was a guy sitting in front of us like like right to like our right hand corner side and he was like a row uh, in front of us and he was of the age to have seen the original dune by david lynch and the or or to uh, of the age to be affected by the book when it first came out and you could feel his excitement through like the two rows of the audience. And he was just like, fucking yeah, like so happy, so excited. Well, and the, or the beginning of the movie, you see the Harkonnens, which are the big bald yeah. dudes. Big bald guys. Big they're, they're in a spacesuit, and they to climb a mountain, they just float. float. And y'all kept talking about this, and I was like, what is, what is, what is so, so special about this? So It's crazy. It's, it's, it's fucking weird. I mean, <laughs> like, they're in space, are they not? They're not in space. They're on Arrakis. Is AKA that not, they're on Dune. a planet. They're on a planet. We're in space. They well, were. aren't they wearing space suits? No. Of they're the, wearing of, suits because they come from a planet that um has a black sun and they can't see That's why they're so in, white. That's why they're so white. <sighs> they can't see infrared or it it it, it bathes them in infrared light and so colored light uh affects their eyes in a really bad way. They're kind of blind. The, anyway. the spacesuit wasn't what made them float. No, they're so like the, the why are they floating? The Harkonnens, or I guess in this world because I also don't else, know why they float. Oh yeah, because somebody <laughs> else is somebody else uses it. I, I I I think some of the Atreides use it, or um, Gurney Halleck uses it. I'm not sure. So I don't remember. Words. But sorry, um, there is a device that allows you to float that. Um, um, the Baron was using to float his big body when he was just like in the first movie, my Arrakis, so my blah, 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 my Dune, and, and he's floating. And it's I'm like going to argue one of the, tr what's so fun about the movie is that it's so dense with lore, yeah. but sometimes it just doesn't matter. It's all no. lore. And it, it has its reasons. But for me watching, I don't, I don't know why they're floating. I don't, no. I don't and you fuck. just like, 
you just kind of fucking let the movie this tap like into a, you and a, you go, a, oh. This was just a coming of age. I you you read it as this. just a coming of age? Yes. I yeah. was like, this is big Timmy Boy's moment. Yeah. He's falling in love. He's getting his dick down for the first time. His mom's <laughs> hallucinating. Yeah. With his, with his sister. Yeah, with his sister who he also can talk to. He Jesus. He's the coming of age yep. messiah. He is Jesus. So I, what I have learned since that many Dune heads know, all the Dunies out there, shout out to the Dunies. Shout out to is, Dunes. Dune is a, a cautionary tale about messiahs. That's what the whole thing is. Mm-hmm. It is about, and it's also an allegory for the Crusades, I believe, oh. uh, about how... Like the Ottoman Empire fell. It was the most. This was very religious. It felt. It's extremely religious. Yeah. Well, because it's like Christianity came in and de- 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 uh, destroyed this this once powerful civilization, and it's about the the false promises that prophets make. So, okay, let's try and break down like the lore and the names. Yeah. Basically, Paul Timmy Chalamet Timmy T Timmy T is foretold as the Messiah, the Lisan al-Gaib, for, the Muad'Dib. Yeah, for, foretold through the Bene Gesserit. Space lay, witches. The space witches laying out. The ones with the tall heads. The one with the tall heads, the reverend mothers, um, laying out a a like a path or a um, prophecy for him to walk through. That's one day there will be a man that can see into the future that will lead them to the promised land. For everything to go back green. Yeah. So, for, so, uh, so essentially Moses, what essentially. you have is these white ladies, these crazy white space witch ladies, space, yep. make up a prophecy, yep. tell the, the, the Fremen, the native people, that one day <sighs> a, a your savior will come. And then they give Lady Jessica, his Timmy's mom, is... Uh, uh, Benny Jesuit. She's a Benny Jesuit. She gives birth. She's not a virgin. She oh. fucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> she's, it's giving she's Mary, unmarried. and she's he's unmarried. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. she is of the people that made this prophecy. Uh-huh. Then she gives birth. They come in and they say, hmm. "Here's your savior." And they warp and twist the hopes and fears of these native people for their own gain. And as we will see in the future movie, destroy these people. <gasps> For their own personal gain. Yeah. So it's like Game of Thrones meets Pocahontas. Y- sure. Yeah. But like mm. instead of dancing with wolves, they just kill the wolves. Oh. Yeah. It's or sad. Use, use the wolves to kill other people. So and, I can't believe whatever. he doesn't really love Zendaya. And I'm not sure if he I does or doesn't. Yeah, I think I, he does. I think he does, but I don't think he like will respect it in a way and put it above his own political game. I'm going to predict right now she killing him. Okay. That's what I think as well. Even I think though it's going to become her saying. story. Well, can we, let's talk about her. Zendaya, who uh, has all of 10 minutes of screen time in the first movie. <laughs> we yeah. were pissed. We were so mad last time. Yeah, it's so funny. She plays Shawnee, which took me till the end of the movie to not realize her name wasn't Johnny. <laughs> oh, my God. Same. <laughs> it's not Johnny. No, it's Shawnee. <laughs> C-H-A-N-I. Well, fuck me. Zendaya is excellent in this yeah. movie. Yeah. I, yeah. And we know, we've been known that she's an excellent yeah. actress. Yeah. I think this is next level for her in a way. I mean, and for almost everyone in this movie. I, yeah, I think that I think that she does these like really, really subtle shifts to where MJ, Rue, and Shawnee are completely different characters yeah. while also being like the same. So, like subtly strong s- as strong fuck. but like it's like a subtle difference yeah where i can tell that jo- johnny is i don't know 25 26 zendaya's age um rue is a teenager dealing with something very heavy and mj is a child dealing with a crush and dealing with getting into college. And like it's almost like Rue and MJ, the difference between the two is drug use. And one is like innocent and the other one isn't. And the difference and between the difference. Rue and Johnny is space. It's space. <laughs> space and age. I feel I, I read her as an, 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 an adult person. And yeah. I think it was so smart having her hold over the first movie because you enter this one and like you know it's playing on my expectations as Fucking someone rips. who doesn't know the story so, so i'm like this is going to be a sweeping love epic and yeah. i am so fully bought into them i before we started recording i was playing the love theme that hans zimmer has for this it's so 
beautiful and like they have this scene where where they're sitting on the dune and he finds out her her like everyone has like a desert name like a warrior name it's like what's your secret name and she says it and he and he's like i love it and she goes i hate it and he goes then i hate it too i hate it too and then she's like i prefer this name he's like then i prefer that too and i'm like holy shit timmy the riz Riz, Riz. that is riz god dripping off the screen but uh they, they they okay the fremen do I'm going to be all over the place this episode. The Fremen have this sand walk that they do so that they don't disturb the, the worms. Yeah. Of course. So they, this is they, a they, sentence yeah, that they, I'm saying. They don't have... So they, they do a, a sand walk so that it is unrhythmic. And so the worms are attracted to steady pulses right. in the sand. They, and, they have yeah. a shot of, of Zendaya teaching Timmy how to do the sand walk. And the two of them are walking into like their silhouettes like as like the sun is setting it's beautiful and it's beautiful. like them dancing together yeah, but it's, it's them so learning stunning. the ways of the desert and yeah. it's just like the, such a oh. the, the way that this movie is epic and intimate at mm. the same time yeah. it's fascinating it's fascinating i can't talk much is, about the story but i can talk a lot about how fucking beautiful they, it, it, it is pure yeah. like pure fucking style wide. just why dripping off of shit there's like Soft, so many though. there are, there is a shot. Oh, there is a shot. Derek has disappeared into yeah, a chair. Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. There is a shot overhead of um, I know Wadib walking through the crowd in the desert. And the way that it looks from overhead, it looks like individual pieces of sand while also on sand. Uh-huh. And the way that that shit rips so fucking hard. Yeah. It's like I I like for you to compose that and then have the have the I I don't know the 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 time and the vision to just be like you know what I I know this movie is kind of about sand it would be really cool if I could figure out a way to make a crowd look like sand <laughs> That's the thing is like I was not expecting this movie to look as fucking real as it did because there are you, you want to talk about huge set pieces. You want to yeah. talk about huge battles, huge fights. But it it surprised me in so many ways that I wasn't expecting. And I was ready to see really bad CGI. I oh, was ready no. to see. Not with Denny. Not I with was Denny. ready to see it too crispy, too digitally. Yeah. Like this felt so real and soft. But we're literally talking about like the big machines against yeah. sand. And yet my favorite scene, honestly, was when Zendaya and Timmy T were tag teaming. Yeah, the the the, the, the thing that was like shooting big yes. robot, the big bad robot in the sky, and they were jumping between feetsies, big T Rex feetsies, yeah, yeah. metal T Rex feetsies. The excavator Sick. was like, it's, oh my god, it it's was a, so good. Okay, first of all, they do this thing repeatedly through the movie, and it got me every, every time, time where the the Fremen will hide in the sand <gasps> with their little fucking their straws. straws. My claustrophobia was like, <laughs> yeah, and they they're fine. just waiting under the sand, and the bad guys are coming, bad guys are coming, and then all of a sudden, whoosh, they and they jump all, out of the sand. they all rise, and they all just start. Yeah. Rah, 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 rah. They know the ways yeah. of the desert. They do this like five times, yeah. and yeah. every time I'm like, yeah, yeah. And the shots were interesting and surprising. Like my favorite out of that scene is when. Zendaya is shooting big bad helicopter in the sky, but it reverses and it looks out of the sniper glass yeah. at Zendaya, but she's putting down the gun. That shit and rips he looks, so fucking hard. It goes back to him realizing that the fucking bomb shot. is already shooting it. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, this is the, the type of shit that made made me go like, this feels different than any, any other You know sci-fi. I fucking hate Sorry, those big superhero movies, the big Transformers, big metal, clean clang, ouchies, can't yep. stand Pew-pow. it. Yep. But like the way this man has thoughts the, the, yeah. makes them different. Like yeah. you watch these huge battles, not to go to the end, like you said, but I won't spoil too much. But the last big battle scene is done with zero score. Yeah. And all it is is sound effects. Yeah. Which is grunts and metal clanging, and I was like, and it's done at the fucking sunset is, yeah. in a crowd full of people on tile. Like it was just a choice. Yeah, it was an aesthetic that choice. Is, that is what this movie is. It is, it is a, a series of, of distinct choices. Choices. 
very, very distinct yeah. choices. And because it was even beautiful. Even on the scene where she's putting the the rocket the rocket down, revealing that she's already shot, and she's like, I already got yeah, you, bitch I. ass. I don't who gives a fuck. And oh. the w- the way that um the ship explodes. So the way that the shields work in this is that nothing fast can penetrate a shield. Oh. That's why they always wait to shoot a laser because lasers are too quick. In this world, lasers were a big thing they because they deactivate were- They had to deactivate the shield. Yeah, in order to, um, so they made shields that blocked everything that moved too quick. So like bullets won't go through, all of that stuff. So they've invented things that come at you slow or like go fast and then go slow or whatever and explode or whatever. That And that's what she shot. Um, and so it like burrowed through the shield and then, and exploded. then exploded. But the coolest thing about that shit is that when the explosion goes off, the shield still remains because the explosion is still fast. So it's still blocking oh. the explosion and it keeps it encapsulated in the shield until the shield generator explodes wow. and then the whole thing explodes. My favorite bit of that is that, so you you have this shot, we're gonna, just gonna hyper focus yeah, on this yeah. one yeah. moment. I love it. Uh, uh, and then it cuts to a wide of Zendaya running and all the sound is out except you just hear her laughing, going ha ha ha, ha 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 And there's like three seconds of yeah. her running joyful, exuberant, yeah. and then and then boom, boom. Yeah. The, helicopter the helicopter crashes, crashes explodes oh my next God. to her. So and cool. like, then the uh, score bursts yeah. in and you're like, let's go. It's the, fucking ripped. See, okay, will this win best cinematography? It has to. Uh, I, think well, I don't know is, what else is gonna come out, but I yes, this is gonna win many awards. Yeah. Did Dune one win any? I don't, I don't know what think it won. So. Why was this one so much better? Because it it had the brevity of the, the or the context of the first one. Yeah. It had it, it it like the first one was just like we've set everything up. Now go, mm-hmm. you know, go run, go fucking have fun with the last two thirds of the move of the mm-hmm. book. Because it it I although it's not like really action packed, it is a lot of just like um, this happens. That's epic. And then we move past that to another political conversation. You're right. It's set the world. The director's yeah. talked about it too. Denny Villeneuve has said, like, I after the first one, he prayed that he got to make the second one because he he did all the homework. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like like the first movie was all of the prerequisite work yeah. to set up this world, yeah. and now he has the sandbox. Yeah, he gets I can to fucking go. run. Yeah, because this movie was very. It was slow. But I fucking loved it. Yeah, I loved weird. Us. And going back to something you said, it's it's something that Denny Villeneuve does and Christopher Nolan. They're similar directors mm-hmm. to some respects. Where this and Oppenheimer both did that thing. You know, okay, Dune Two has a lot of big action set pieces, mm-hmm. but for a lot of it, it manages to make intimate moments yeah. feel massive yeah. in a way that I still don't understand. I mean, I'll probably s- yeah. train, study my whole life there's, and not understand how Oppenheimer did that. Yeah, there's just, there, there's something about being empathetic towards people who are like war torn or who have seen like crazy mm-hmm. fucking things mm-hmm. where it's just like, yeah, we, we sit here and we like pretend like we're safe all of the time. But if we were born in a different country or different anywhere else, the, the the shit that we would have seen at a young age would have been fucking crazy. Yeah. And for you to then put yourself in that predicament and then shoot from that angle, mm-hmm. I feel like adds a lot of that like epic. The, the, it adds a lot of the intimacy to the epic nature of the of what yeah, the set piece strange. or whatever you're yeah. filming. It's just like you really do have to put yourself there. Now, if you were like me, or maybe you're like Kelsey currently, there's a lot of words <laughs> a lot of in words. Dune. Yeah, uh, a lot of we're, names. We're going to do our best now to break them down. Yes, yeah. please. So we have Arrakis. Yeah, that is the uh, desert planet that they are on, that they are trying to um, trying to get... Uh, spice melange, which is yeah. what they call. Oh spice. shit! You already lost me. What's melange? It's melange spice. is is what spice. It, the, I guess that's like its scientific name, but that's what the space guild uses um, to navigate planets because um, you have to chart out the path of like an interstellar jump so that you don't hit anything. 
And so yeah. you kind of have to see into the future where Spice everything Spice is will a be. drug that allows you yes. to kind of trip and see the future. It's, yeah, it's, I didn't mushrooms. know that they, that's how they use it for inter inter space yeah. travel. Uh, and then, yeah, and uh, anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I, that's I what I remember. <laughs> so, the de so like Zendaya's people the Fremen. can see. The Fremen. The, the Fremen, Fremen are the, Fremen. the native people the native of people. Arrakis. Arrakis. Uh-huh. They can see into the future to make sure they don't hit planets? Yeah, yeah, I believe so it's a, it's a weird type of like humanoid person that mm. can do this oh okay so it's not uh, the front end that it's not it. i mean but they, they do trip, but they because but, but, they're high on spice yeah the, yeah but uh, why are they taking the it so much? oh the exposure to spice uh is what makes their eyes blue and it's just everywhere which is it's actually worm poop it's not uh said in the movie for whatever oh, reason it's yeah it's worm shit that is what happens so it's literally That's what they shrooms. excavate yeah Ex excre excre excrement is excavated. Ex excrements. Ah. That's what they excremate. That's what they sure. share. Okay. Uh, the Harkonnens. Harkonnens. Big white people. Big, big uh, bald white big people. Big bald white like people. But, Very yeah. pale. Austin. Does that mean we get to talk about Austin Butler? Austin, yeah, big yeah. boy Butler. You condense quick. quick no, no, quick. no. I'm going to just stay with all our, our okay. terms. Our terms first. Uh, now, Paul. Yeah. Timmy Chalamet. Yep. He has... 14 names. 14 names. Usul. Us, us, yeah, Usul. Which means which is, desert mouse. No, Muad'Dib means desert mouse. Fuck. Usul, Usul is Oh, pillar. Usul means pillar. Yeah. Usul is the name that somebody from Arrakis or a, a, a Fremen gives you, I believe. And then- You um, also have a secret. So you have a, you have a, a Fremen name. Yeah. And, and then, then you have a Fremen warrior name. That you give yourself. So Usul, Muad'Dib- Mwadib means desert mouse. Yep, because they're smart <laughs> and small. Then there's also... Uh, uh, I, fucking, I fucking love this shit, Lisan Al-Gaib. Lisan Al-Gaib. Which is... Um, Messiah, I, get, I believe. Um, that is their name for the Messiah in Fremen cu culture. Then there's the Bene Gesserit. Yep, the Bene Gesserit or the Space Witches. This sounds like um, a <laughs> Nissan sale by Benny and the Jets That's is what I'm hilarious. hearing. That's hilarious. That's what my brain says. Like, so the, I think that it... This is what Star Wars came from. If you complain about like, oh my God, there's so many names in this, blah, 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 blah. And what am I doing? This is where sci-fi came from. It is from Dune. And for everybody to then be like, well, what are all these names? This doesn't make any sense. It's like, yeah, but we all know what a Jedi is. Like we've learned this. Oh, for years, it's yeah. just that it's just it's the our first foray into what actually started all of this, all of like all of the sci-fi boom. The only reason why George Lucas made Star Wars is because he wanted to make Dune and they were like, no. And so he made Star Wars. And so it's like if you if you can try to make those parallels in between the two, it makes it a lot easier and it makes it a lot more palatable. Does Warner Brothers own Dune? Uh, yeah. no. Sure. Yeah. I just want to see Dune at an amusement park, like the way they have yeah, the Star Wars land and stuff in Harry Potter World. I would mm -hmm. like to see Dune World. I would too. I would um, do some spice. Yeah. Right? I would. Uh, the way I would wear a still suit. The still suit is the um, the giant suit that they wear that um, takes all of the moisture from their body out that any that leaks out any sweat or whatever and and recycles it and turns it into drinking water. Let me oh, tell you, I poop. would be seen as a fucking god there Cause because your girl, she sweats. She's liquid. Yeah. Do you pee? Do you pee and poop? Also, you also. Uh, Listen, I got I got water and and liquids all the time coming out of every hole I've ever had. All right. Hilarious. I, I would have been the fucking messiah over yeah. there. All right. Okay? Hell yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. There is uh, uh, Javier Bardem. Ah. Oh, so funny. Is pitch Daddy. perfect he is so unbelievably Daddy. funny in a movie that needs levity in such yeah. a Some, real way yeah I, I thought about him with your uh not gross at all moisture th bit uh <laughs> because he'll always like someone's crying and he'll wipe it away and be like don't waste the water and he licks it he's like yep. uh don't and then it. uh when when lady jessica's gonna vomit at the beginning he's like don't, don't let it out don't don't, don't let it out because yeah. water is so crucial yeah. yeah but this motherfucker plate like he's actually oh god he's so good Wait. He's great. 
He's um, fantastic. A lot of people, he's or funny. not a lot of people, he's he brings people, the comedic relief and yeah, not in a forced way. People were like, "Oh, why is there a funny? Why did he become funny in the first place?" I thought he was pretty humorous in the first movie. It's as well. earnest. It's, it's earnest from his belief. It's from yeah. his true belief that yeah. he is Messiah. Yeah. It's not. He's not kidding around. He's not like providing jokes, yuck yucks. He's yeah. like, no, this is what I truly have a passion and belief for: passion of the Christ. Yeah, and it's what I. It's such a brilliant choice by Denny Villeneuve to make him a hilarious character and and Javier Bardem as well right because he's hilarious he's like oh this like religious crank uncle who yeah. believes in Ed, the the running joke is anything that Paul does yeah. he'll just say in Fremen as it was written as it was. like oh my god Lisa uh, Al Gaib like it's everything that Paul does like Paul sneezes and he's like that's the guy yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything that Paul does in his mind fulfills the prophecy mm -hmm. even when Paul chooses the name of Desert Mouse as his warrior name everyone laughs he's like no 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 yeah. that's a very that's good, a good name. name like this dude rides harder for Paul than any wingman has ever rode for anyone yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and what makes it such a brilliant choice is that you laugh it off you laugh it off you laugh it off and then at the end you see oh no this is real <laughs> religious yeah. extremism will have people follow you to terrible terrible choices yeah. and something that we have been smiling at and laughing at that's been right underneath our noses now allows this horrific man to rise to power in a really scary way yeah so beautiful how does at the end when Timmy's fighting the big bad white guy. Who we will get to. Yeah, because he deserves his own moment in that chiseled jawline. Um, what happens to the Freeman? And the, Fremen. the Fremen. Yeah. Aren't they fighting for him? Yeah. But it's a big question. Yeah. And he, I don't know if I want to answer it yet. I would, maybe now I want to talk about Austin Butler. Yeah, just to keep Austin fucking Butler. with you. Oh, my God. Austin butt fuck Miller. Uh, Am I right, guys? Wow. Sure. So... Everybody was talking about the Oppenheimer black and white, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's really cool. But I think that this, this is the best black and white sequence that we have ever seen. Ever. Like, so the to set the, the scene, we are on um, the Harkonnen homeworld, which is Getty Prime, I believe, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it is covered in the light of a black sun. And so it only sheds uh, black and white light. Um, and so the only way that you can get like some form of like stark contrast like let, let's say there's a scene where there is fireworks or whatever they go to the fireworks oh, and they look yeah. like ink blots or they look like rorschach tests or and all of that stuff is just yeah. like because those are the only things that would actually emit some form of spectacle some uh -huh. form of saturation and uh, that's also why they paint their teeth black and all of that stuff that's not i don't think any of this is in the book i don't remember this being in in the book but it's just really cool to see but to watch a full gladiator fight in black and white for a legitimate reason and not just being like, oh, we're getting in the past now. This is all this stuff. And it's just like, no, there's a like a technically scientific reason why this is shot the way it is. I didn't even realize it, it turned to black and white. That's how good it was. <laughs> and that scene of the doors opening and Austin Butler's big ass head. Big ass with head. With a Big ass jawline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That man no eyebrows. looked scary He's as terrifying. Fuck. Very good villain. And someone was reviewing it saying something about like the original in the Bade original Rotha was Sting. Was yeah. and he was like a little bit more playful bad boy, like rock star bad boy. This Austin Butler was, was a fucking psychopath. But he was like still playful and I think he was like playfully He was like playing psycho. with his food before yeah. he killed it. I think that he <laughs> He was he horny was, for death. He was yes. horny for death and horny for pain. He was a, a sadist? He or is it a masochist? He Both. Yes. Which he, are like, he licks his knife. There's a scene when um like he watches uh his own father get killed and th there's a there's a reaction shot and he seems turned on. Yeah. yeah. He's just like anytime something happens he's like <sighs> Yeah. Hey, uh, Wait, when did he watch his dad get killed? 
And he stabs him in the neck. No, that's his uncle. Oh, oh his, his uncle. uncle. Thank you. Okay, oh, I was like, bad. wait. Uh, yeah. Because his cousin was David Batista, yeah. and I didn't understand that family connection. Yeah, it, yeah. it don't seem like they uh, look like it. I would all. like to yeah, remind better. you that in our uh, review of the first movie, you said that Dave Batista was hot in this film. Yeah, I, st- I stand by that. Okay, yeah, great. great. Just wanted to get that on the record. I just don't think they look related. There is a, uh, a letterbox review where someone said that no one has ever looked more bald. In, like, however <laughs> bald you think yeah. a person can be. Uh, uh, Austin Butler looks balder. What? Oh, I forgot. Somebody, somebody on Twitter found that. Um, she, she was like, I think that there is a secret writer out there that is trying to regular <laughs> make. What, what is the word to make regular? I'm sorry. Regulate. Normalize. No, 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 no. He's somebody who's trying to normalize being bald and having a bald head <laughs> out there. It's just like, yeah, but what if we made the villain? More bald. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the baldest that anyone baldest has ever anybody been. ever no, been. Eyebrows. Face and bald. Face bald. Completely bald. And then they found that he, this um, writer has written something else with Denis Villeneuve. Um, and that bad guy also, also was bald. bald. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, oh shit, it, it's real. It's and, him. Um, but it's, something's happening. All the movies are making me want to shave my head, shave my whole body, the whole the body. Because like, the, spent. please don't. I know, I know. I work too hard. Yeah, work too hard. Too I work too money. hard to barely get here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh, Rainy. Uh, <laughs> but even so, like the fact that, like his yeah. eyebrows, he had no facial hair. He had black teeth. I, which I, which is the only time I've ever seen that work. He looked That's, contoured. He looked yeah. Yet he was all white. He was all white. I, I my complaint crazy. of the movie, if I had one, is I wish I had more of him. Yeah. Oh, amen, sister. Yeah, I wish I, I saw. Died sad. The, I wish I saw more, like crazy shit that he was doing because also like all of the crazy shit that he was doing was to other people i think there was one scene where he did cruelty to the fremen um but i wish there was like more to like be like oh this guy is terrifying it's just a, like he's cooking he's yeah. so in his element austin butler you know you, coming off of elvis there was this question of like does he have it or is this just oh he got it of course it. he, he fucking got it. has it and that was my other question was there was like talk on Twitter or TikTok that you can hear the Elvis accent in this. Do you guys agree? No. I, no, I, I, he's doing something. He I, was yeah. doing something. So he had a, uh, apparently he had a dialect coach to sound like um, Stellan Skarsgård. And I, I thought he, oh, he nailed yeah, that. So yeah. he got, he was mimicking him because he's just like, that's oh, what. brother. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That. But that's how, why he always, like, he's got, yeah, yeah, my name is fucking. And you know, Austin, my name is Austin Butler. You know? And uh, the way that I like this movie. Uh, is he stays like that. He stays, he stays there in that raspy oh. voice. Dune. Uh, Dune. Uh, on the black and white, do you know about how they shot it? It's really cool. No. no. Yeah, so normally, Please. I guess I could have saved this for the fun facts, but uh, normally when a movie is black and white these days, it'll often actually be shot in color. color. And then they... Uh, make it black and white after the fact and this it's because uh, studios get really scared like black and white is scary and so to shoot natively in black and white um, they often chicken out Uh, what they did for this is they shot with infrared cameras and it's like a totally different lensing type it's it, it gives that really intense vibrant black and white and it also is unpredictable. So they had to test every fabric, every shade of everything. Cause you know, you could be wearing all black, but your shirt in the infrared would appear white and your pants would be more charcoal. And like, it just, it was, it would pick up colors and the absence of color in really surprising ways. And so Denny Villeneuve went to the studio and he's like, just so you know, there's no going back. Like once we do this, we do this. And they said, Denny cook. It That's was so great. cool. I, I love how much liberty he was given with this movie because this is what happens when you kind of just let a singular vision uh, cook uh, essentially or just let them do what they need to do. Trust them. I feel like that's what it looks like. And how could you not? You have to trust because this story is bonkers batshit crazy. crazy. And it's we've barely begun to scratch the surface of how insane this is. The movie begins with the shot of a baby floating in the womb, Mm -hmm. and then we get to hear the baby in the womb talking. (laughs) That baby then drinks the water of life, then become the the infant 
the the fetus in the womb through the water of life gains the memories of tens of thousands of years of Fremen, and of, now is it a Fremen of, or, or no or of, 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 of Bene Gesserit? I'm not it sure. Just a society. It can see yeah, the past it can see that only woman can handle. Yeah. By the way, love okay, that wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I love that. So when I get into the theater, uh, uh to go see it with Garrick, I sit down and I put my drink in the the seat holder next to me, the right. First of all, where do you put your drink? The right side. It's, that's the mm, that's the proper side. I, I, no, it changes. No, you put your hands up. B for bre- B for bread. Beverage. D for drink. No, B for bread. D for bread. D for bread. D for drink. Your drink goes on your right side. Anyway, I put it in, and then the woman, the movie's already started. The woman's like, "Actually, that's mine." <gasps> and I go, "Oh." Okay, and like, cause she was like taking a sip. I guess at that exact moment that I put my drink down. So, and then I look, and Garrick has his drink in the right side, cause of course he does. And so I just go like, oh, whatever, and I put my drink on the floor. And she's like, Well, no, you can ask him to move your drink over. And, and I'm like, It's fine, it's fine. You're wrong. I'm not gonna argue with you. Yeah. I just and I just accepted it. Then fast forwarded to the movie. They have this line where they go, the the water of life. Uh, and it's like, what would happen if I drank it, mother? And it's like, no man can handle it. Like, men yeah. would die if they drink it. And the woman goes, ha, huh, and elbows me like, you what? see that? And I'm like, lady, we're not doing we're this not together. What friends. is that even in reference to? We're not doing Dune together. That yeah. was a reach. I, I rebuked that as a feminist. That's she so didn't funny. get that one. And then Garrick and I walked, uh, like, we walked to get his car at the end. I called an Uber, and, and she looked by and goes, Hi, neighbors. And I'm like, you need to, this is, we do not have a bond. <laughs> We're not, there, there, nothing happened between us in that theater. That's so funny. Although that could be a hot debate topic if you put that on Twitter about which oh, holder yeah. do you put a drink Where in. Where do you put the drink in? Because when you get to a movie theater, no, you put your exactly. drink in. We already heard you explain yours. In the right. <laughs> Listen to me. What is it? We're sharing, we're at the date. Hey, we're at date. We're splitting a drink. Where are you putting it? On your right? Absolutely uh, not. You're putting it in the left. But it depends on where you're sitting. What if we're like this? If we're like this, it's on the left side. Exactly. Well, but okay, if you're on a date, you put it in between, in between you, but that you. does not all of a sudden give you access to the cup holder to your left I'm for your snacky. I'm then putting my candy in there. If, I, I, to the right, you can, but no, left. Oh, no, I'm putting my candy in left. No, that's someone else's. Zachary. You get one cup holder, Kelsey. Are you out of here? What am I in the middle seat on the plane here? <laughs> Yes. Are you crazy? We, you actually should put this on TikTok because I feel like we could break the internet. You have one cup holder. The That's cup so holder funny. to your you right. You think I got two hands. I got two holes. You think I'm using one? Okay, the new fancy movie theater gives everyone two cup holders on both sides. But traditional movie theaters have one cup holder between seats. You know what I think? If you take two. Survival of the motherfucking fittest. Who is there first? I'm claiming three if I can. Okay, I want you to pretend here. Put if you're sitting to the put 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 a drink next to me. <laughs> <laughs> he threw it. Audience, it's he threw like the drink. I like didn't even. I tried to grab it in my hand, like it rejected. Yeah. It. He's got Yo, magnets in his hands. I have never once That's w- thought of, I put my candy here and my drink here or my drink here and my candy here. And then I usually put my popcorn and nachos under my feet or in my lap. I always take up two. What do you think about when your buddy gets popcorn and he has the popcorn on his lap? I always take a handful and then put, put it, it on my lap, lap so that I don't have to keep going back every so bite. So you have oil stains? Put it in your fucking cup holder, you. Ew. <laughs> so the Benny Jesuit. Oh my uh, god. My good. Z- Garrick fully left us to go to Instagram. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> because I didn't like. I think that that is crazy that you think you get two cup holders. I don't know a world in which anyone there, thinks otherwise. There's literally, like there there are more seats than there are cup holders. Am I am I being one wrong? person gets two? The person who sits I've all the way that. on the left. <laughs> No, I think whoever sits first is going to decide the flow of the room. Kelsey, if you get two cup holders, that means someone gets no cup holders. You know what? What? Women have been held down uh, for uh, long enough. <laughs> don't tell me what to do with my holes, Zachary. Okay, go on. It's so funny. Carry on about your fucking Sandy movie. Let's go. There's two huge things that we have to talk about at yeah. least. We got it. Okay. All this right. Worm? 
worm. I don't know if Zach saw this or not, but during the sequence, I was tearing up. Yep. Because <laughs> it was such a spectacle and so well executed and well um, pulled off that I was like losing my mind. It was worm in a million. It was worm in a million. <laughs> It was warm in a million. I was like truly grateful that I was able to witness this in my lifetime. That's how I feel about Harry Potter. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> this is better than Harry Potter. I knew I would get him. Timmy anyway. rides a T goddamn worm. He a, rides a, a, a big worm. Harry butthole worm. W rides a big old butthole worm. Something that should look goofy was made to look fucking kinda, spectacular. Kinda cute. Kind of adorable, it kind of important. It doesn't look important. scary at all. So as, so like he's, he's, he's looking for a place to put his thumper, which is a thing, the rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> I am being serious. I'm trying to be serious. He's looking for a place to put his thumper in his big old dump truck. <laughs> he's going to call the worm. He's call the worm. To call a worm, come he to winds a big up. Thumper, got it. He to, to, so he fucking twerks on the drum sand, <laughs> <laughs> and he calls the biggest worm. The biggest worm is just like, oh, I understand. As it that. was written, as, as it, was it, written, it was written, calls the biggest worm. Um, we yeah. we get a good line um from our boy being like, oh my god, not not that big. It was just very funny. Um, but he comes in. The worm comes in and you, which was not this whole scene, uh, 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 also according to Denny, he didn't know what to do with this scene because he, it's not in the book. Oh. Like how he gets on the worm is not in the book at From all. what I understand, the book is very like, it's poetry, it's very dreamlike, it's very, and it, it yeah, it, it skips yeah. over some of these details. Yeah. So people for a long time have been wondering how do you ride a worm? How do you okay. get on a worm? How do you even get on the worm? But My you get question on... was, how do you get off? He said that he figured it out and okay. he can't wait to show you in part three. Okay, now we're talking. I fucking love but it. we've known forever that you can ride a worm, but he never showed you, Frank Herbert never showed how to get on the, get so on this the worm. This was big. This was a huge fucking moment. You this is like in the crevasse. This is live this is like living has been living in people's minds for I don't however long I guess Dune was written in the sixties, however long that movie uh, that has been out. I'm not gonna do the quick math on the eighty years. Um but <laughs> <laughs> but um it, it's not 80 years, uh, but yeah, he gets on, he worm. gets on the worm for it's been lying in people's minds for 64 years. And the, the way that he gets on the worm calls it the, the thumper, the, 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 the worm comes in and he's standing <laughs> on a giant dune essentially. Uh -huh. And then the worm breaks the dune and then he uses that crevice to fall down onto it as it's breaking through the dune. Do you itself. think he met with engineers and architects to check this math? I, I don't I think do. so. I, I I'm not sure. Like I don't know. I don't think it matters, dog. Because it's a majestic it's just, it's a, sequence. It's a majestic yeah. fucking sequence. As um Paul is just falling down the sand dune, essentially, you're watching a man kind of like fall to his death. His death, the unknown. We just watched in the first movie where like they were fucking sprinting away from this thing. It's so terrifying. And the idea of him actually jumping onto the back, you're like, dog, I don't know if you're going to actually make this. I know that the story calls for you to make it to the end. You're the protagonist. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid for your safety. And you're just watching him tumble down with these like hooks. He's not grabbing onto anything. He's just fucking falling until he hits the back of the worm, which is also fucking moving at a locomotive speed. And he starts tumbling and all this stuff. And the only thing that he can do is literally grab for whatever the hooks latch onto, which winds up being um, the scale of a worm. Which it's, then, it's air flap. <laughs> it's air flap. It's nostril, apparently, that if you pull it up, it, you can steer it because it turns in, a, in the direction that its air flap is going or whatever. All I knew was that shot where that little Timmy Tam is on top of that giant yeah. worm made me laugh. So fucking hard. It made you laugh. All I could imagine was all the tattoos that I'm going to see on nerdy white boys of that worm with that little man sitting yeah, on top. Wee! Wee! 
It's so it was I, giving we. Oh can I tell God. you something that'll amp you up? Mm. So uh, in movies, there's a first unit and a second unit. So uh, like oftentimes, uh, if you have like exterior shots or or you know, you'll send the second unit. It's kind of like the director's working on the big scenes. They send the second unit to go direct something else. Um, has a different crew, has different directors. For this movie, they had a worm unit. Oh, and sick. They, they set up this system where while Denny was directing the rest of the movie, they would slowly, slowly, slowly chip away at this worm scene, sometimes taking hours, sometimes taking days to do single shots. And he wow. was able to direct both at the same time. And they they gave, again, days, weeks to just for this scene because of how monumental it is to the story and to the, the Doonies. I yeah. don't know how, like, I, I can't wrap my head around how a movie this big gets made. Like how? Oh, wait, long, I, I don't understand. How how much time is he putting into it every day? What is he studying? How does he do it? Like how does he study it? I just can't, I can't fathom how big of a scale of pressure yeah. of work that is. Yeah, we've talked a lot about the direction, the movie. We've talked about a lot of the actors, but uh, we've only really said his name in passing. Timothy Chalamet gives the best performance yeah. of his career. Yeah, silence, hands, hands down, like. There's there's not a not an ounce of hesitation in my voice when I say that. He is it is a role of restraint and then explosion. Yeah. And so yeah. you have this scene towards the end when he rises into the prophecy and he betrays Zendaya, the heartbreak that I felt and her performance mm. is yeah. phenomenal in that. But he goes he basically says Fuck all of you. There's no one in this room who can take me down. And everyone gasps. And he goes, I am Paul Atreides. Uso Mwadib. Yeah. I am the Lisan Al Gaib. I am the one that your mothers have warned you about. Woo! I am the one that you have been dreaming of and fearing your entire life. Not what? a single person in this room can stand up to me. And you have this scrawny little white boy <laughs> who is with with this intense fire in his voice. Mm -hmm. And I believe him. Oh, I yeah. believe every second of it. It is from that moment on, my eyes are glued open. Fucking lock. My there was a double lock in. There is a double. Like, first there's just like, okay, all right, you're watching the movie. Okay, people are floating. All right, lock in. Well, this is fucking crazy. Oh my god, I can't believe they're they're floating onto that cliff. And then you get to that scene, and you're like, Jesus Christ! There's like you lean even more into the question. fucking movie. How come you didn't want to go to the south? And then he went and was like, not a big he bad knew, boy. He knew that that was going to happen so because he, he can see. Knew he was going to be a villain. And he still went. He, so he was having visions, yeah. these apocalypse, these dreams, because he's hypersensitive to spice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's giving him these dreams of the future, and when he sees the future, <laughs> he knows that if he ever goes south, he's going to become a messianic figure that is going to lead and cause the death of yeah. millions of people. Yeah. Which, by the way, I forgot to say the the moment where I knew that this movie changed. He has nukes. Mm -hmm. He has oh, yeah. like 64 nuclear yeah. warhead missiles. Yeah. And I go, oh, 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 yeah. that's what we're watching. We yeah. are watching the rise of a genocidal maniac. Yeah. But and so why he does has he go? These, he has these visions. And then he drinks the water of life, uh -huh. the blue water. He sees every potential future it's kind of well i was going to make an mcu reference you don't know marvel uh, -uh. uh for everyone else it's kind of like when dr strange sees every potential uh path and there's only one in which they can defeat thanos and so he says if we are to believe paul he sees death and destruction for the fremen he sees death and destruction for his family but there's a narrow path that has that results in the least amount of suffering and even that path results in suffering, suffering. Yeah. and now i i'm curious if you know more than i do garrick because i again haven't read the books but this is so are we to believe that he is leading because he's going to cause all this death because he genuinely believes that it will lead to less death overall or 
is he a dictator and he is actually going to lead because of his own hubris because of his desire to lead and he doesn't care who dies in the yeah, process that part I, I don't know that part i don't know that part i i am not sure at all um it it does definitely just feel like he's going off of a, a path that makes sure that he gets the revenge that he felt like he deserved i don't i i don't know and I thought about like his he wants probably the best for his sister's future, which he, like spoiler yeah, alert, Anya also Taylor Joy to, is showing up. Yeah, yeah, I mean he's looking I so I he's looking after his family line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I watched it a second time, it actually made me really sad for Zendaya's character because mm -hmm. it's clear that from the beginning, when they are going to see the Fremen, he and his mom and his sister. That is who he's looking out for. Mm -hmm. And even though I do believe that he loved Zendaya, at the end of the day, his love for her did not supersede yeah, his, his own and, feeling of yeah. familial loyalty. Familia! Familia. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and he has this thing where, like, he is Paul Atreides. He is of House Atreides. And what yeah. matters is that family crest going on. Um, and, and he also, from the beginning... He, when he's entering the Fremen, he's not doing it out of, uh, uh, like, I want to learn about these people. He's doing it because he wants to trick them into believing he's the Messiah so that he can get back at the Harkonnens, use them as an army, because he wants revenge. He wants uh... to kill the people that killed his father. That is what is driving him the entire movie. When he drinks the water of life, something changes, and I don't know what. Like, he becomes a, a different person, and he becomes absolute... Um, but it's fucking heartbreaking to watch like yeah. this this guy. I mean, this is the rise of an anti-hero. Yeah. This is someone who yeah. could have had a hero's he journey. Just, he'll turn. And instead, he he has nukes. Yeah. Mm. The beginning of the third book, as I understand it, begins that he's already killed billions of people. Like uh, 60 million people or something like that. A, a couple million people. Because the war between the the Fremen the and Holy War the Holy War um between the Fremen and I'm sorry the, second the, book yeah yeah the other houses who deny um the uh, emperor's or his claim to the throne um Paul's claim to the throne or, or mm -hmm. whatever he's fighting against them to be like you guys got Florence get Pugh she's great we love her in it she's yes. great she's amazing there's so Costumes much to be queen. Queen. yeah, yeah. I, Florence Pugh as the queen yeah. he I mean that is the betrayal of all betrayals where I mean, if yeah. you're gonna leave Zendaya for anyone it can only be Florence Pugh well he's not leaving her he's just like taking this right, is like a right. political hand betray, in marriage yeah. yeah it's it's more of that than yeah. the other because um in the book she doesn't really storm off for real, like she kind of just stands behind. Can her you believe this, Rainy? That he tells uh, Timmy Salome tells Zendaya, "I will love you to my dying breath." Then he meets Florence Pugh and immediately says, "I will take you as my bride." I I'm like actually really interested in this, and I sort of want to watch Dune two, but not Dune one. You can. Can you do that? Yeah, and I went so, with a girl who didn't I see one, and I, she totally was so like, "That was amazing." I would very very much just. I was like, confused by one. I would <laughs> beg you. To watch them all Take it in, from one, me, Rainey. in one sitting. You and I are the same. You can see it without it. Okay, yeah, because I'm sorry, I'm like overwhelmed. I'm I, I'm not gonna do it if I I'm not gonna watch two if I have to watch one. Unless you get you the don't flu have to. tomorrow, you don't need to. Oh, yeah. I think you should watch them both. It's just it so really beautiful. Thinky. Yes, it's not yeah. thinky. Me no thinky. It's me watching. post apocalyptic in the future as well. It's I'll cool. try it. I'll try it. Yeah. It's cool and it like. Maybe let her watch two, and then she'll be like, "I want to watch one now." Yeah, it's okay, made maybe. me want to go back and watch one again. I'll say yeah. that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I really want to watch them both in in one sitting. Christopher Walken? No, he's the emperor. There. No, he's in Come there. Come on, man! I burst into laughter. I didn't understand that casting choice. So funny. I just, I'm just happy to see him. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know, you talk about like all of the smart choices that Denny made. He made, you know, you said Shawnee in the book doesn't storm off. She yeah. accepts it. And this, she storms off, which yeah. I, I know Frank Herbert, the author, was upset that people didn't get that this was supposed to be a cautionary tale. Yeah. Um, and so seeing it through her eyes, I think, allows that. It's, yeah. In the book, every chapter begins with Florence Pugh's character. Yeah. Narrating it, Princess taking Gale. her out of the first book, I think yeah. is so smart because it sets you up to expect and believe in this love story between Zendaya and Timmy, oh. which makes the heartbreak all the more. Ugh. Do you have any fun facts? Oh, wait, so that means we're done talking about it? I have yeah. to do fun yeah, facts? Sucks. <laughs> but what about it? Sucks. I, it's I think nighttime. that this, yeah, no. it's nighttime. I think that this podcast <laughs> could be another hour if we needed or if we wanted. Um, Can I tell you one last thing before a fun fact is that the big reveal 
of the movie is that the name of the planet in Fremen is Dune. Fucking Dune! <laughs> Everybody sh- in the fucking audience should have pointed at the screen and done the Leo. Huh. Which Garrick did. I did it. Garrick literally pointed and went, dude, dude. That was a reveal? Yeah. yeah. It's the name of the planet is Dune? The in ancient Fremen. Yeah, yeah the way that, that Paul uh, like proves to everyone that he's the least on Al-Gaib is he's just looking oh. at people. He's like, you have dreams about this and you don't even feel bad. And your mom did this back when this planet went by its... He's saying this all in the Fremen language. Like back when the planet went by the name... Dude. And everyone and then, goes, Lisa oh, Nakaib! Yeah, yeah. Lisa Nakaib! And the funny Javier Vandem gets the funniest line in the movie. Lisa Nakaib! Got it. Got it. <laughs> it's very good. Y'all ready for some fun facts? I'm ready. So Austin Butler, hard to imagine anyone else as our horny uh, uh, our maniac. Our god. So sick. Which, by the way, did you understand in the lore that Paul was supposed to be born a girl? No. Paul was supposed to be born... Timmy was supposed to be born a girl and was supposed to be wed to (gasps) Austin Butler. Oh, no. But then Lady Jessica loved Oscar Isaac and he wanted a son, so she changed it to a boy in her tummy because she's a space witch. You can do that. And then changed the whole prophecy. But as a result, when they're... She gave birth to the Kwisat Haderach. Kwisat Haderach. And as a result, when Austin Butler and Timmy Chalamet are fighting... It's kind of like they're fucking. Mm-hmm. All right, sure. And Austin Butler's kind of turned on by him. You can tell. Okay. Uh, they uh, before Austin Butler was cast, they considered Mr. Bill Skarsgård, Ooh, of course. Makes sense. You know, still in Skarsgård is in the movie, and Barry Keegan. Oh, oh man! Fuck me! That'd be yeah, good. he's too little. He would have been a creepy yeah. little guy. He would have been a creepy little guy. He loves being a creepy little guy. Put him in the third one somewhere. I'd like to see it. I think he could fit in. I think he could fit in. Uh, Okay. Um, Stellan Skarsgård's body makeup to become the big old worm man. Eight hours to apply. Two to remove. Damn. Damn. (laughs) Holy shit. He didn't drink anything and then took Imodium pills (gasps) so that he didn't have to go to the bathroom during shooting days. Oh, (laughs) The dude was constipated and then ate. Oh, my God. I Okay, so... He's Stellan, right? Stellan Skarsgård. Yeah, yeah. Stellan Skarsgård has a like. I'm 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 bringing it out of Dune for a second, just to show like how good of an actor he is. There is a scene in Andor, the Star Wars um, drama, um, that is his like. Somebody asks him, "What did this is Andor is about the creation of the rebellion?" Um, I think, or the rebel, rebels. I'm sorry, but there's just a there's just a scene of him being asked, "What did you sacrifice in order for this to uh, be a thing, or to to start the rebels and all of the, the rebel group or whatever?" And he goes on probably one of the greatest monologues I have ever seen, and um, he 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 deserves props. I feel I feel like he needs to be in way more things. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. I just love that scene. Um, I was, I have a quote here from, uh, Frank Herbert, who I just thought this was really funny and you guys would enjoy. He refers to his writing style as having a coital rhythm. Ew. Hmm. This is in an interview. It's, uh, quote, you see, and so we turn the whole thing whirling backward through the story. There was another thing there in the pacing of the story, very slow at the beginning. It's a coital rhythm all the way through the story. The interview says, it's a what? Coital rhythm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Very slow pace, increasing all the way through. And when you get to the ending of it, I chopped it. And I went at a non-breaking point so that the person reading the story skids out of the story, trailing bits of it with him. On this, I know I was successful because people came come to me and say they want more. And this dude took a lot of acid. Mm-hmm. Wow. This was uh, the entire... Uh, run of the book or the chapters is it has a coital rhythm. The 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 first book. Okay. Because I've seen people say that it's like really slow and dreamlike, yeah, it's, and it's the sweet. ending is intense. It's intense. It's a lot. Um, kind of like these that's movies. like Akatar. Very nice. You read it? No, because the first one is so slow. Girl, I'll just stick with it. That's what I've heard, but man, and I just made seven hundred new oh, friends. Oh, is this, is this, this female Dune? This is female ah. Akatar. I know a lot of people are reading the Akatar. Yeah, Talk about coital rhythm, am I right? It's, 
Lisa and Margot Robbie was just seen <gasps> meeting with the author. So that could fuck. Um, it's giving Dune meets Twilight. Yeah. 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 It's much more. I don't know. I mean, I, I only read fantasy. the first half. Of the <laughs> first fantasy. Fucks. Fantasy novel that makes you feel nice when you read yeah. it. What's it called? The act? The uh, Derek's going to read it? A Court of Thorns and Roses. A C O T. I have I, a copy. I'll, I'll bring it to yeah, you. Yeah, I also have a copy. Uh, <laughs> you have a copy. <laughs> you do? I mean, I don't have it. But it's in my it. home. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there are a couple deleted scenes from this movie, including the great Stephen McKinley. Uh, and Denny Villeneuve has said there will be no deleted scenes released. Uh, he is a strong believer. Quote, Aww. I'm a strong believer that when it's not in the movie, it's dead. <gasps> I kill darlings and it's painful for me. I should be saying this in a th- French accent. Sometimes I remove shots and I say, I cannot believe I'm cutting this out. I feel like a samurai opening my gut. Uh, but yeah, he. I mean, this is a really fucking long quote. He believes that if it's cut, it's cut for a reason. No one will ever well, see it. Well, think about it. You'd have to. At this scale, you would have yeah. to be like, this is dead and done and over. Because if not, you would go fucking crazy being like, well, maybe we could do a director's cut. Or maybe we do a second release. Maybe we do an extended. Ethan- like, no way. You You have to, at this scale, just say goodbye. Tim Blake Nelson has was in the movie and he got cut out. Who that? And we'll never know. He's great. You know him. Oh. This motherfucker, he was in holes. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, right? Damn. Don't you want to see him in Dune? He yeah. looks like he'd be a really good white ball guy. Um, and then Austin Butler has a long quote about how he usually does method acting, but he didn't do it for this because he would have been a psychopath, and he realized that. So yeah. good for and him. And he also improvised that second kiss. Oh, we know that. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, we could talk about this forever, but we must. Yeah, we could. We have to Is this movie a pleasure, a guilty pleasure, or just plain Shut guilty? Up, yeah, it's fucking crazy. Shut up. I, uh, it, it's a, it's, it's such a huge pee on the wall of pleasures. You it's peed all over it. You pee all over it. You thump all over it. <laughs> I, I think that. It, it it's you need to watch this movie because you need to watch or it, 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 like I guess experience the one of the mothers of sci-fi I, I i mean from star wars all the way to like attack on titan it is the a bit of the same plot um and i i feel like anybody that is has found those two properties or any property in between interesting should absolutely see this movie you should also see it because this is what you can do with Vision and two hundred million dollars. Damn. Yeah, the money helps. The money helps. Uh, if it's still on the big screen, Go make it, it. make yeah, a priority. Yeah, get yeah. out there, it watch it on as big a screen as possible. Yeah. yeah. Try and find us uh, an IMAX theater IMAX if, if you can. can. Yeah. I'm at Corn Diddy on all the things. I'm Kelsey Dare on all the things. I'm Garrett Bernard on all the things. <laughs> Until next time, Lisa Nagaib. Lisa Nagaib. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Bless you.